Hello children, I am the parrot and I welcome you to this lesson. Let's see what we will learn in this video. We will learn to identify the position of different objects and to find the position of objects using terms such as inside, outside and under, on. It's holiday for Chotu today. Therefore, Chotu is playing outside his house. It's rainy season and looks like it can rain anytime. Chotu's mother is cooking inside the house. Chotu's father is also helping his mother. It started raining when Chotu was playing outside the house. Chotu, don't get wet in the rain. You will get sick. Come inside the house quickly. Chotu went inside the house. He stood near the window and started looking outside. He saw that he had left his ball outside the house and it got wet in the rain. Chotu went outside quickly and brought back the ball inside. Then he heard the voice of his mother. Chotu, come to the kitchen. I have made pakoras for you. Oh wow, pakoras. Chotu quickly went to the kitchen. And he ate a lot of pakoras. Children, can you see whether Chotu is inside the house or outside the house? Yes, here Chotu is inside the house. And here he is outside the house. And children, here Chotu's ball is outside the house. And here it is inside the house. Now let's see where is Chotu. Chotu is inside the kitchen. And here he is outside the kitchen. So children, now you know about the position like inside and outside. After some time, the rain stopped and Chotu wants to go outside to play with his friends. Mummy, I can't find my bat. Do you know where is it kept? Chotu, look under the table. Chotu looked under the table but he did not find his bat. Mummy, it's not under the table. So, it might be under the bed. Okay, Mummy, I will check. Chotu looked under the bed and found his bat. Mummy, I found my bat. It was under the bed only. Chotu, I have kept a raincoat for you on the bed. Just take that too. Okay, Mummy, I will take it. Mummy, can you give me a new ball? Why, Chotu? Where is your old ball? Mummy, that ball got wet in the rain. Okay, Chotu, the new ball is kept on the top of the Almira. Let me just get it right now for you. Chotu's mother took the ball which was kept on top of the Almira and gave it to Chotu. And then Chotu pulled out his shoes which were kept under the Almira and went out to play. Children, did you see where Chotu's bat was kept? Chotu's bat was kept under the bed and his raincoat was kept on the bed. Chotu's mother took the ball which was kept on the top of the Almira and Chotu's shoes were under the Almira. So children, we have seen that objects are usually kept at certain places and words such as under, on, inside, outside are used to exactly tell us their position. That's all for today children. In this video, we learned how to identify the position of different objects and know the position of objects using terms such as inside, outside, under, on. In the next video, we will see some interesting examples related to the position of different objects. 
Till then, bye children. Interesting examples of identifying position part 1. So children, in the previous video we learned how to identify the position of different objects and know the position of objects using terms such as inside, outside, under, on. In this video we will see some interesting examples related to the position of different objects. Today Toto went to see a movie with his family and he loved the movie. On reaching home, he was so tired that he immediately went to bed. And when he was sleeping, he saw few of the characters of the movie in his dream. Come, let us see what his dream was. He saw that Tinku had gone to find food with his friend Chiku. Tinku saw a cave and he said Chiku, Chiku, let's go inside that cave. Maybe we can find something to eat there. Yes, let's go, Tinku. Both of them went inside the cave. As soon as both of them went inside the cave, they heard a fearful voice. And they got scared and ran out of the cave. After coming outside, Tinko and Chiku saw some mangoes on a tree. Chiku see, there are some mangoes on that tree. Hey Tinko, some mangoes are lying under the tree too. Let's pick those mangoes. As soon as both of them came near the tree, they saw some monkeys sitting on the tree watching them. And as they tried to get all those mangoes, some of the monkeys suddenly climbed down the tree. And both of them ran away from there in fear. That's when Choto woke up from his dream. Children, do you know where were Chiku and Tinku standing? Outside the cave or inside the cave? Yes, now they both are inside the cave. And here they are outside the game. And children, where are the mangoes? On the tree or under the tree? These mangoes are under the tree. And where are the monkeys? On the tree or under the tree? These monkeys are on the tree. And these are under the tree. So children, we saw that few things were on the tree and few were under the tree. Few were inside, few were outside. These are called position of objects. That was all for today. In this video, we saw some interesting examples related to the position of objects such as on, under, inside, outside. In the next video, we will see some more interesting examples related to the position of objects. Till then, bye children. Interesting examples of identifying position. Part 2 Children, in the previous video, we saw some interesting examples related to the position of objects using terms such as on, under, inside, outside. In this video, we will see some more examples related to the position of objects. Today, Chotu and Pinky are helping their mother in cleaning the house. Chotu, look here. Your math notebook is kept on the table. Keep it under the table. Chotu picked up his math notebook from the table and kept it under the table. 
Mummy, Choto's pencil box is also kept outside his bag. Choto, keep this pencil box inside your bag. And Choto kept his pencil box inside his bag. After keeping the pencil box inside the bag, he left his bag on the bed. Choto, please pick your bag from the bed and keep it in the almira. Okay, mummy. Choto picked up his bag from the bed and kept it inside the almira. After cleaning that room, they went to the next room to clean it. And they found toys of Chotu and Pinky lying scattered all over the floor. So their mother fetched their toy box from the top of the almira and said, Children, now you both collect all your toys and keep them inside this box. Chotu and Pinky kept all their toys in the box. And clean the entire room. And then both of them went out to play. So children, did you see how Pinky and Chotu change the position of different objects while cleaning the rooms? Like picking up the notebook from the table and placing it under the table. And the toy box was on the top of the almira. Choto's mother took the box from there and kept it down. Even Choto and Pinky picked all the toys which were lying outside the box and kept them inside the box. So children, that was all for today. In this video, we saw some more interesting examples related to the position of objects like on, under, inside, outside. And I hope you all must have understood this properly. Bye children. Identifying large and small objects. Hello friends. I am a parrot and I welcome you to this lesson. Come let's see what you will learn in this lesson. Identifying small and large objects. Identifying the smallest and largest object. Today Chotu was taken for a walk by the school to a nearby forest and Chotu has got homework that he has to gather some things and paste it in his notebook. Chotu thought of taking two flowers, two leaves and two bird feathers from the forest. While taking a walk in the forest, Chotu found a lot of fallen flowers under a tree. Chotu picked two flowers from it. Hey, these are very beautiful flowers. I will take two flowers, a small flower and a large flower. After going a little further, Chotu saw fallen leaves from which he picked up two leaves. One big leaf and one small leaf. While walking, he found a tree on which a lot of birds were sitting. Under that tree were a lot of fallen feathers. Chotu thought to lift two feathers from them. I will take one small feather and one big feather. Oh wow! I got flowers, leaves and bird feather. Now I will go home and stick them in my notebook. When Chotu reached home, he took out his copy and brought everything to stick in his notebook. First, I will paste the leaves. Here are the two leaves. We'll put big leaf here and small leaf here. Chotu pasted both the leaves. Now he thought of pasting the flowers. This little flower, let me put it here. And this big flower here. Now it is the turn of the bird's feathers. Here are the two feathers of the bird. 
So hey kids, can you tell which one of these feathers is shorter? You thought right kids. This is a small feather. I will paste small feather here and now I will paste this big feather here. Oh wow, all my work is done. Children, you saw how Chotu recognized big and small things? Like this is a small flower and this is a big flower. This is a small leaf and this is a big leaf. This is a small feather and this is a big feather. A new bicycle shop is open in the forest. All animals are very excited. Elephant, monkey and squirrel all three reach to buy bicycles from the shop. Here are the bicycles they bought. Can you tell which bicycle is whose? This is the biggest bicycle. It is for the elephant because it is the largest among those three animals. So kids, can you tell which is the squirrel's bicycle? Yes, you thought right children. The squirrel is the tiniest among those three animals and his bicycle is also the smallest. This means the squirrel will get the smallest bicycle. And this is monkey's bicycle. So kids, the elephant is the biggest among those three friends. So he took the biggest bicycle. And the squirrel is the smallest among them. So he has taken the shortest bicycle. Hey children, that's all for today. In this video we learned identifying small and large objects. Identifying the smallest and largest objects. In the next video, we will see some more examples of identifying small and big objects. That's all for today. Bye-bye friends. of identifying big and small objects. Part 1 Hello children! In the previous video, we learned identifying small and large objects, identifying the smallest and largest objects. In this video, we will see some more examples of identifying small and big objects. Today, Tinu Rat and Minu Cat are playing together. They got hungry while playing. Let's eat something, Tinu. Yes, Minu, you are right. I am very hungry too. Let's go to the kitchen. There we will find some bread to eat. Both Minu and Tinu go to the kitchen. Two breads were kept there. One small bread and one big bread. Children, can you tell which of these is a small bread and which one is the big bread? Okay, let's see. Yes, you guessed it right kids. This bread is big and this one is small. Minu the cat is big among them. So she takes the big bread. And Tinu the mouse is small. So he takes small bread. After eating, Tinu and Minu play a lot and then leave for their home. Children, here is Minu's house and here is Tinu's house. Can you tell which one of them has a bigger house? Come on, let's see. Yes, you are right children. Minu's house is bigger than Tinu's house. And Tinu's house is smaller than Minu's house. So kids, you saw Minu cat is big. So she ate big bread and her house is also big. Tinu rat is small. So he took small bread and his house is also small. Today Minu cat and Tinu rat have come together on a picnic. Both have brought something to eat for themselves from home. Hey Tinu, your lunchbox is so small. 
And Meenu, your box is much bigger than my box. Children, do you know which of these boxes belongs to Tinu? Yes, the small box belongs to Tinu. Here is Tinu's box. And this is the box that belongs to Meenu, which is bigger than Tinu's box. Meenu and Tinu ate their food stomach full and then they started playing. So children, that's it for today. And in this video, we saw some more examples of identifying small and large objects. In the next video, we will see some more examples of identifying small and big objects and learn about common mistakes which should not be made. Till then kids, bye-bye. Examples of identifying big and small objects. Part 2 Hello kids! In the previous video, we saw some more examples of identifying small and big objects. In this video, we will see some more examples of identifying small and big objects and learn about common mistakes which should not be made. Today, Chotu and Pinky's maternal uncle brought two chocolates for them. Mom, give me one of these chocolates, please. Here, take Pinky. Mom, I want a big one because this one is too small. Children, here are the two chocolates that their uncle got for them. So kids, by looking at them, can you tell which of these does Pinky want? Yes. Out of these two, this chocolate is bigger. So she wants to have this chocolate. And this chocolate is smaller than the other chocolate. Today Chotu's mother is sitting in the room peeling some peas. Her plate is full. She tells Chotu, Chotu, just bring a small plate for me from the kitchen. Chotu goes to the kitchen to take the plate. But he does not understand which is the small plate. Hey, both these plates are smaller than this plate. So which plate should I give to mom? Chotu took all three plates to his mother and asked her. Mom, both these plates are smaller than this plate. So which plate should I give you? Chotu, you are right. Both these plates are smaller than this plate. Can you tell me which is the smallest among them? Yes, mom. This plate is the smallest. Isn't it, mom? Yes, Chotu. You are absolutely right. Now put the other two plates back, please. Okay, mom. Children, did you see? This is the smallest plate among these three plates and this is the largest plate. So hey kids, that's it for today. In this video, we learn to identify big and small objects. And I really hope you understood this topic properly. Okay then, bye kids. Identifying two-dimensional shapes. Hello children, I am the parrot. Welcome to this video. Come on, let us see what we will learn in this session. Identifying two-dimensional shapes. Today in Choto's class, ma'am gave cards of two-dimensional shapes to everyone. And they were asked to sort those cards separately. Pinky, look here. There is a circle on this card. We should keep it separately. Yes, Chotu. Just see, I also have a card on which a circle is made. We can keep these two together. Now let us get to this shape. Pinky, look. This shape is made of four lines. We can keep it aside. 
Yes, Chotu. And this shape is also made of four lines. We should keep it with the other four-sided shape. And now there is the shape made of three lines. Yes, Pinky. We should keep it separately. And this too. Ma'am, we have sorted all the cards by looking at their shapes. Wow, Chotu. Wow, Pinky. You have sorted these cards perfectly. Look at this. This is a round looking shape and we call it a circle. Ma'am, isn't this also a circle? Yes, Pinky. This is also a circle. And this shape is the rectangle. And we call it a square. Ma'am, what is the difference between square and rectangle? Both these shapes are made of four lines. Chotu, look carefully. This shape is made of four lines of the same length. That's why we call it a square. And here in this shape, all four lines are not equal. Only the lines opposite to each other are equal. The length of the adjacent lines are different. We call this rectangle. Like this is rectangle. And this is square. Okay, ma'am. And now let's see this shape. We call it a triangle. Ma'am, why do we call this a triangle? Pinky, because this shape is made of three lines. That's why we call it a triangle. Then that means this is also a triangle, right? Yes, Pinky, you are right. This is also a triangle. Children, today we recognize few two-dimensional shapes and their names. Like we call this round shape a circle, the four-sided shape with equal opposite sides is called a rectangle. And this shape which is called square is made up of four equal sides. And this is a triangle because this shape is made up of three sides. So children, that was all for today. In this video, we learned identifying two-dimensional shapes. In the next video, we will see examples of identifying two-dimensional shapes. Till then, bye children. Examples of identifying two-dimensional shapes. Hello kids. In the previous video, we learned identifying two-dimensional shapes. In this video, we will see examples of identifying two-dimensional shapes. Today, Chotu and Pinky are playing with sand in the park. Pinky, look, I have built this house with sand. Oh, wow, Chotu. This house is made of different shapes. This is a shape made of three sides. And this is a shape made of four sides. Yes, Pinky. Do you remember what ma'am told us yesterday? She told us that a shape made of three sides is called a triangle. And a shape made of four sides is called a rectangle. Now show me what you have made. Chotu, I have made only sun so far. Now I will also build a house like yours. Pinky, you have made a round shape for the sun. It means this is a circle, right? Yes, Chotu. Yesterday, ma'am had said that we call such circular shapes as circles. So, children, did you see how Chotu and Pinky are playing by making different shapes in the sand? 
After some time, they started making different types of triangles, squares, rectangles, and circles, such as these. So, children, do you know what shape is this? Yes, it is a triangle because it is a shape made of three sides. And this one, it is a square because it is a shape made of four equal sides. And this is a rectangle. After playing this game, Chotu and Pinky went to do their school homework. Let's see what they are doing. Chotu and Pinky have been given a picture, which is made of different shapes. And they have to identify the shapes in that picture and fill them with different colors such as yellow color in circle, blue color in rectangle, red color in square, and green color in triangle. So children, now all the circles in this picture have to be filled with yellow color. Can you identify the circle in this picture? Yes, this is a circle. It will be filled with yellow color. Now all the rectangles have to be filled with blue color. Can you identify the rectangle in this picture? Here are the rectangles. So we will fill blue color in them. After this, fill the square with red color. So can you identify the squares in this picture? Here are the squares. So we fill them with red color. Now we come to the triangle. In the triangle, we have to fill the green color. Color is now filled in the whole picture. So kids, in this video we saw some examples of identifying two-dimensional shapes. In the next video, we will see some common mistakes in identifying two-dimensional shapes. That should be avoided. Until then, bye children. Common mistakes in identifying two dimensional shapes. Hello, kids. In the previous video, we saw examples of identifying two-dimensional shapes. In this video, we will see some common mistakes in identifying two-dimensional shapes that should be avoided. Today, Chotu and Neha are playing a game together. They have some straws in this game and they have to make shapes by joining these straws. Neha, what are you making? Chotu, I have made a shape out of three straws. Can you identify the shape I made? Children, do you know which shape Neha has made? Come on, let's see. Neha, the shape is made of three straws. It means it is a triangle. Is it so? Yes, Chotu, you are right. Neha, now let me try and you tell me what I have made. Okay, Chotu. I made the shape with four straws. So tell me, what is this shape? Children, do you know which shape is this? Come on, let us see. It is made of four straws. This means it is a rectangle. Yes, Neha, you are right. Now I will also make a rectangle. Neha used four equal length straws to make a rectangle. Children, do you remember what we call this shape? Come, let us see. Neha, we call this shape a square. Chotu, this shape is also made of four straws. Why is it a square then? Yes, the shape is also made of four straws, but the shape made of four lines which are of the same length, so it is called a square. Okay. Fine, Chotu. I have understood. 
This means that this shape is square because it is made of four equal length straws. So children, now you can also distinguish between square and rectangle, right? Both rectangle and square are made up of four sides. But the shape whose four sides are of equal length is called a square. And this is the rectangle. So kids, that is all for today. In this video, we saw some common mistakes in identifying two-dimensional shapes which should be avoided. I hope you have understood this topic properly. Bye children! Sorting of Objects Part 1 Hello children, I am the parrot. Welcome to this video. In this video, we will learn sorting objects by identifying them by their colors. Today, Chotu and Aarti thought of bringing their toys to play together. Chotu and Aarti started playing with their toys. Aarti, see my toys. Wow, Chotu, even I have similar kind of toys. Chotu and Aarti played for a long time with all their toys. Aarti, today we played a lot and enjoyed it. Come on, let's now separate our toys. But Chotu, how will we identify our toys? They both call Aarti's mother for help. Mummy, we do not understand which of these toys belong to Chotu and which ones are mine. Please help us, Mummy. Aarti, it is very easy. You like blue color a lot and you take all your toys in blue color. So all the blue toys that are kept here belong to you and all the yellow colored toys are yours, Chotu. Looks like yellow is your favorite color. Yes, auntie. I like yellow color a lot. Seeing the color, it is very easy to sort our toys. Now we will separate all our toys. So children, can you tell us which of these toys are Chotu's? You are right children. All the yellow colored toys belong to Chotu. And all the blue colored toys belong to Aarti. Chotu and Aarti sorted their toys. And after sorting their toys, Chotu said, Aarti, it was so quick. We could identify the colors of our toys and could easily separate them. So children, did you see how to identify the colors of objects and sort them accordingly? Children, that was all for today. In this video, we learned how to sort objects by identifying their colors. In the next video, we will learn sorting objects on the basis of their shape. Till then, bye children. Sorting of Objects Part 2 Hello children, in the previous video we sorted objects by identifying their colors. Come see what we will learn in this video. Sorting objects by identifying their shapes. Yesterday Chotu learned to sort things according to the colors. Today he remembered that his snake and ladder pieces and his marbles are kept together. So he thought of separating them. I will sort all these pieces and marbles. 
Oh, these are all of different colors. What do I do now? Choto goes to his mother. Mummy, I do not understand how I can separate them because they are all of different colors. Choto see this. All these marbles have the shape of a round ball. And these snake and ladder pieces are like a cone of an ice cream. But are they not in different colors? Chotu, to separate pieces and marbles, you do not have to check the colors. As you can easily separate them by looking at their shape. Okay, mummy. I will separate them now. These snake and ladder pieces are like cones. So put them in this box. And all these marbles are like the shape of a round ball. So put them in this box. Mummy, pieces with the shape of a cone will go in this box, right? Children, can you tell me whether this piece which is like the shape of a cone is to be kept in this box or not? Yes. It is like the shape of a cone. So we will keep it in this box. So children, did you give the same answer? After that, Choto picked up the marbles resembling the shape of a round ball. Children, can you tell me into which box they should be dropped? Yes, it will go into this box. After this, Choto took this piece. Children, do you know into which box it will be dropped? You thought right. Children, if it is like the shape of a cone, then it will be placed in this box. And by identifying the shape, Choto separated the pieces resembling cone-shaped ones from that of round ball like marbles. Children, that was all for today. In this video, we learned sorting objects by identifying the shape. In the next video, we will learn identifying different shapes and sorting them. Till then, bye children. Of objects part 3 hello children I am the parrot and I welcome you to this video in the previous video we learned sorting objects by identifying their shapes come on let us see what we will learn in this lesson sorting different objects on the basis of their shape Choto and Neha have gone to the fair today. He liked the game there. Come on Choto, let's play. This game looks very interesting. Alright Neha. Auntie, how to play this game? Children, this is a special game. In this game, you have to sort all the items placed on the table one by one by identifying their shape and should place them in four different boxes placed there. In the first box, round, ball-like objects. In the second box, box-like objects. In the third box, cylinder-like objects. And in the fourth box, ice cream cone-like objects. Choto and Neha started playing. Chodo, first of all, let's find objects that look like the shape of a round ball. Yes, Neha. I found an object which looks like a round ball. I will put it in this box. Here is another round ball like thing. Yes, Neha. Put it in this box too. Neha puts a round ball like object in the box. Now they have to identify objects of other shapes. Come on Chotu, now let's look for items that has box like shape. Children, can you identify a box shaped object from all these items? Right children, 
Here is an object which looks like a box. Got it. Here it is. Now let's put it in this box. And now we have to find something that looks like a cylinder. And I will find this item Neha. Children, can you help Chotu find something similar to the shape of a cylinder? You thought right children. This object looks like a cylinder. Chotu put the cylinder like object in this box. Wow, Chotu, now I will put the last item. This shape is like an ice cream cone. Children, can you identify an object which has the shape of a cone of an ice cream? You identified it correctly. This is a cone-like object. Chotu and Neha identified the shapes of all the objects and placed them in different boxes. So, children, did you see? How Chotu and Neha identified four different shapes and kept them in different boxes like a round ball shape, ice cream cone like shape, box like shape and cylinder shape. That was all for today. In this video we learned sorting different objects on the basis of their shapes. In the next video we will see some common mistakes in sorting objects. Till then, bye children. Common mistakes in sorting objects. So children, in the previous video, we learned sorting different objects on the basis of their shape. In this video, we will see some common mistakes in sorting objects. Today, Choto's teacher has brought some objects to the class. Children, look, I have brought some objects with me. Can you identify them? The teacher shows an object and asks, Children, can you identify? That which shape this object resembles? Teacher, this is a round ball like shape. Well done, Aarti. You are right. This has a round ball like shape. The teacher now showed another item and asked, Children, what does this object looks like? Teacher, this has a box like shape. Well done, Chotu. Well said. This has a box-like shape. Children, now can you recognize the shape of this object? Teacher, it looks like a cylinder. Very good, Aarti. Well said. This has a cylinder-like shape. Teacher, this has ice cream cone-like shape. Very well, Chotu. Well said. This has a cone-like shape. And children, here we have a shape that looks like a cylinder. But Choto did not understand the difference between these two figures. Teacher, but both these shapes look alike. Choto, why do you think these two shapes are the same? Teacher, see this. The shape's base is round. And other shape also has a round base. Chotu, you are right. Both of these shapes are round at the bottom. But if we look at both these figures from above, the cylinder-like shape is round from the top and the cone-like shape is pointed from the top. Oh, is it so? Come on, let us identify the cylinder-like shape and the cone-like shape out of these two objects. Children, can you identify the shape of these objects? Teacher, its shape is like that of a cylinder. Well done, Pinky. It is like a cylinder. Teacher, its shape is like a cone. Well done, Chotu. It has a cone-like shape. Children, 
was your answer the same? So as you have seen, the cylinder-like shape is round on both sides, but the cone-like shape is round on one side and pointed on the other side. So that was all for today. In this video, we all saw the common mistakes in sorting objects. I hope you have understood this topic properly. Bye children! And I welcome you to this lesson. Let's see what we will learn in this lesson. Difference between roll and slide. And identify objects that roll and slide. Today Chotu and Pinky have come to play in the park with their mother. Mummy, I want to play on the slide. Yes, Mummy, me too. Okay, children, go and slide. Chotu and Pinky take turns to slide. Chotu had his ball in his pocket and it slipped out of his pocket when he was sliding off from the slide. Hey, Chotu, your ball also slid with you. Pinky, the ball does not slide. It rolls. Mummy, what is rolling? See children, some objects slide and we say they are sliding. And some objects roll and we say they are rolling. To know which of the objects roll and which ones slide, we will get few objects. Come on Pinky, go and bring that water bottle and a wooden scale. And Chotu, you go and get that tiffin box and ball of wool. Okay, okay Mummy. Pinky brought a bottle of water and a wooden scale and Chotu brought a tiffin box and a ball of wool. Come on, let's see what they are doing now. Chotu and Pinky, both of you bring the objects here and then push them one by one off the swing to see if it is rolling or sliding. Just see Pinky, water bottle just rolled and fell down. And Chotu, your tiffin box came down sliding. Mummy, let me just try pushing this wooden scale. Look, Mummy, it slid down, isn't it? Yes, Pinky, this wooden scale slid down. Mummy, may I try and push this woolen ball? Yes, Chotu, why don't you try? Mummy, this ball of wool rolled and came down. Rightly said, Chotu. So, Mummy, this means that all round objects roll and the rest of the objects slide down. Is it so, Mummy? Yes, Chotu. The objects that have a round surface, they roll. Just like this orange, it is round, so it will roll. And if the surface is not round like this notebook, then it will slide. So children, did you see objects whose surface is round, they roll. And objects whose surface is not round, they slide down. So children, that was all for today. In this video, we learned difference between rolling and sliding. 
and identifying objects that roll and the object that slide in the next video we will see some interesting examples of objects that roll and slide till then bye bye children children in the previous video we learned difference between rolling and sliding and identifying objects that roll and the objects that slide this video we will see some interesting examples of objects that roll and slide chotu and pinky have come home from school today and are playing carrom pinky do you remember that we have been asked in school to make a list of items that roll and slide yes chotu i remember yes let's make the list after playing but chotu how shall we know that which object slides and which object rolls we will have to think about it but see i toss the queen in the pit hey chotu these pieces are sliding into the pit oh wow we got one example come on pinky let's see by pushing more objects like this and chotu collected some objects from the house chotu now let's try to push them on the carrom board but pinky this carrom board is very small all these objects will not fit into it now how will we push objects on it so we will push every object on the floor one by one and see which objects are rolling and which objects are sliding chotu and pinky started pushing the objects one by one on the floor come on let's push this water bottle see it's rolling now let's try to push this notebook it's sliding It's pencil stone now, and it is continuously rolling. Now let's push the sharpener. It is sliding. Chotu, all the surfaces of the objects which are circular, they are rolling, and the objects whose surfaces are not circular, they are sliding. Yes, Pinky. So children. Can you tell me whether this rolling pin will slide or roll? You are right children. The surface of this rolling pin is circular, so it will roll. And this pencil box will slide or roll. If the surface of this pencil box is not circular, it will slide. So children you saw that the objects whose surface is circular they always roll on the floor and those whose surface is not circular they always slide on the floor so children in this video we identified the objects that roll and objects that slide In the next video we will see some more interesting examples of identifying objects that roll and slide and learn about some common mistakes that should not be made Till then bye children
In the previous video, we learned identifying objects that roll and objects that slide. In this video, we will see objects that roll and slide too. Chotu and Piggy have music class today. Chotu is learning to play the dholak and Piggy is learning to play the flute. Their music sir gave them some time to practice in between classes. Chotu, I also want to play dholak. Please give it to me. Pinky, this dholak is rolling. Yes, Chotu, because this surface of the dholak is circular, that's why. After some time, Pinky looked at another dholak. Hey, Chotu, just see, we can also slide this dholak. Yes, Pinky, you are right. This means that dholak is round from one side and not round from the other side. The dholak will roll if it is on the round surface and the dholak will slide if it is on the surface which is not round. This means we can roll the dholak as well as slide it. You are right Pinky, come on. Now you play the flute and I will play the dholak. So kids, did you see? How a single object can slide as well as roll. After coming back from the music class, Chotu and Pinky started to see some other objects which can both slide as well as roll. We have some objects. Come on, let us see which of these objects roll and which of the objects slide. This is a glass ball. It can only roll because its surface is round. This is a box. It can only slide because none of its surface is round. Now let's see this tin box. It can slide because it has one surface which is not round. And it can also roll because it has a round surface also. And children, this is watermelon. It is round. It means it will roll. So kids, you saw that some objects can slide and even roll. Because some of their surfaces are round and some surfaces are not round. So kids, that was all for today. In this video, we learned about such objects which roll as well as slide. I hope you have understood this topic very well. Bye children. Hello friends, I'm a parrot. Welcome to this lesson. Let us see what you will learn in this chapter. What actually are the characteristics of objects and how different groups of objects are formed based on their characteristics. Come on, let's go to Chotu's house. Chotu has just entered the first grade. His mother is helping Chotu to keep his new books and toys in the cupboard. Chotu, come on now. Keep both your books in your cupboard according to their size. This means keep the big book at the bottom and keep the small book on it. Can you help me to do this? Yes, of course. Can you tell me, out of these two books, which one is the big book and which one is the small book? Yes, 
This one is the big book and this one is the small book. Very good Chotu. Let's look at these toys now. The shapes of all these toys are different. One is round like a ball while another one is square like your book. And their color is also different. Yes mom, but I did not get why are you telling me all this? My dear, big or small size, different shape or different color. These are the characteristics of these objects on the basis of which we can differentiate, I mean classify them. Oh, okay. So you are older and I am younger. These are also our characteristics, isn't it? Yes, Chotu. You got it absolutely right. Very good. Mom, now I feel like playing with toys. Will you play with me, Mom? Yes, my dear. Let us now play Jungle Jungle. But before that, except the animal toys, let's keep all the other toys inside the cupboard. Okay, Mom. Can we play Jungle Jungle now? Yes, of course, my son. I am a lion and I am very hungry now. Should I eat this white rabbit or this black goat? Hey, this brown deer also looks delicious. Come on Chotu, quickly hide all these animals from the lion so that he cannot eat them. But how mom? Keep the white rabbit along with the white object so that it is not visible to the lion. Similarly, keep the rest of the animals with objects similar to their color. Okay mom. I have hidden all the animals. Now the lion will not be able to eat them, right? Well done, son. No, now the lion will not be able to eat them. And that's why he was very upset and went back. Yay! I saved the animals. Yes, son. Very good. Did you see how Chotu classified the animals based on their color? and place them with objects matching their colors. So do you know what this process of grouping objects on the basis of their characteristics is called? This process is called classification of objects. This means that based on the characteristics, the process of classifying objects with similar characteristics and grouping them is called classification. Can you classify the books in your bag on the basis of their color and size? Come on, it's night now and you should go to sleep. Quickly put these toys back and go to sleep. Okay mom, I had a lot of fun today. We will play again tomorrow. Sure, son. Now go to sleep. Good night. That's all for today. In this video, we have learned what are the characteristics of objects. On the basis of characteristics, how we can classify objects and make different groups of them. We have also learned that this process of creating different groups is called classification. In the next video, we will see some more examples of classification. Bye friends! ...of objects. So children, in the previous video you have learned 
what are the characteristics of objects on the basis of characteristics how we can classify the objects and make different groups of them you also learn that this process of grouping based on characteristics is called classification in this video we will see some examples of classification in which we will group objects based on their characteristics it is morning and chotu's mother is soaking clothes chotu comes to help his mother mom what are you doing son i'm separating clothes before washing them may i help you with this yes why not can you put different clothes in different buckets based on their color okay chotu looks at the clothes and put all the shirts in one bucket all the pants in the second bucket and all the sarees in the last bucket seeing this his mother starts laughing chotu does not understand why his mother is laughing can you tell us why chotu's mother laugh did chotu separate the clothes properly mom why are you laughing did i do something wrong <laughs> yes son i had asked you to separate all the clothes on the basis of their color but you have separated them based on their types oh ho let me do it correctly now chotu takes all the clothes out of the bucket and then puts all the white clothes in one bucket blue clothes in the second bucket and all the red clothes in the third bucket in this way on the basis of the characteristic of clothes that is on the basis of color chotu has classified and made different groups can you tell what is this process called yes you got it right it is called classification mom i am feeling very hungry let's go and eat something okay son but nothing is ready yet let me quickly make dal and rice okay mom i will also come to the kitchen with you chotu and his mother go to the kitchen on the shelf in the kitchen a box of dal is placed behind the rajma box as chotu's mother picks up the dal box both rajma and dal boxes accidentally fall from her hand and both dal and rajma get mixed oh ho dal has mixed with rajma chotu can you help me separate dal and rajma yes mom i will help you do this chotu then starts putting dal in one bowl and rajma in another bowl so children can you tell me what chotu is doing yes you people are absolutely right he is classifying dal and rajma on the basis of their color and size and grouping them into two separate bowls yeah you go mom dal and rajma are separated very good chotu thank you now let me quickly make dal and rice for you okay mom till then let me go and call everybody else to eat so children did you enjoy seeing the examples of classification so that's all for today in this video we have learned how we can classify objects based on their characteristics like color and shape 
and thus how to create different groups of them. I hope you have enjoyed and understood this topic properly. Bye friends.